Hey everybody, Zach here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Malone Pilot Roof Bike Rack. Now this is a wheel mounted style. Now when it comes to roof bike racks, there's some different styles out there and one of the most common ones is the fork mounted style. You have to take the front tire off and you, you mount it and those, those are usually a little bit more cost effective and they're a little bit easier if you have a higher roof. but sometimes it's difficult to get that front tire off or if you have a through axle bike and you don't want to have to buy adapters a wheel mounted style is the way to go so with my jetta it's not too difficult to get this lifted up and put in place i like being able to just take it off and get going on the trail i don't have to worry about finding a place to store my tire and getting it attached properly this is just a little bit easier setup in my opinion. Now, when it comes to roof bike racks versus a hitch mounted style one, I don't have a hitch on my car. It might be a little bit more cost effective to go with a hitch style if you're just doing a single bike, but you have to install that. It's a little bit easier setup to get all of this put in place. Plus, I just kind of like having a bike rack on top of my car. I don't have to worry about anything being extended on the back. My backup camera is not blocked. so. I think a roof bike rack is a really nice option if you're just going riding by yourself consistently and meeting friends at the trail. Now another cool thing about this bike rack, when it comes to this design right here, this allows it to conform to the vehicle a little bit better. So it gives us a little bit better clearance if you have any issues. You know, we don't really have anything here, but as these roof racks start getting pitched, it allows us to sit a little bit more even on our roof. When it comes to attaching this to your roof rack, it just has these bolts with these clamps that go around it, and it's gonna work with most aero bars. Now this one I have on here today is a little over three inches wide by about an inch and a quarter. It's gonna work out for most of those. It's gonna work out with a lot of the square and round bars, and also a lot of factory crossbars. The ones it won't work with are some of the like heavy duty bars or the bars that come factory on the Hummer or Xterra. And another thing to be mindful of is the minimum crossbar spread. So this has a minimum crossbar spread of 24 inches. If you're below that, you may have to find another option, but you can also take that out. This one here today that I have set up is about 28 and a half inches. That's kind of a standard spread on crossbars. So that's just giving you a good idea that this can go a little bit further out to fit a wide range of vehicles. The bike is held in place with three points of contact. So we have the two tires and then we have that wheel hook. Now this is gonna work with a lot of different bikes. We just have this road bike up here today, but we can get up to about four and a half inches of tire width there. So this is gonna work out with a lot of different bikes and we have plenty of strap here. I've got this tucked away. You can see this is a really long strap. So we can get up around some of those kind of fat tire style bikes to get a nice secure fit. Now. The one thing with this is it only has a 33 pound uh, capacity. So some of those fat bikes are gonna get up over that weight capacity, but it's gonna work out great for most road and mountain bikes, especially if you start getting up there in those tire sizes. And when it comes to this wheel hook, this just grabs onto the tire and it's got a decent foam pad there. I don't know if that's gonna hold up for a long term. Like we've seen some of those foam pads on other bike racks and getting a lot of use and getting exposed to the elements. That sometimes deteriorates, but it is going to provide some nice protection against scratches on our bike. And it does have a nice secure fit. So you can see the bike moving around a little bit, but that's essentially in the bike rack shifting back and forth. That is pretty common with a lot of roof bike racks. So I don't see anything really rocking back and forth. There's a little bit of play there, but going down the road, I feel pretty confident that that's gonna hold in place. One thing I was kind of surprised that this came with was a lock. And a lot of bike racks, um, especially in the entry level of a category, uh, they kind of start losing some of those features and you have to buy those separately. So some of the higher end bike racks, you still have to buy those locks, but it's nice that this is included. So it just comes with this set of keys and that's how we release it. So you unlock it and then it brings itself up and then we can lower this out of the way. Now, one of the downsides to this is this is sort of, it's held in place right now, but this goes all the way down. So I think over time that could potentially wear itself out in there. And if I let that go, that's gonna make contact with my glass on my car. Now, if you're putting this on an SUV, it's probably just gonna be your roof. 
but either way, you don't want that making contact with your car. So right out of the box, it held itself in place, but let's say a gust of wind, you bump the car, or you just start wearing out the inner workings of that, it's eventually gonna make its way down and it's gonna make contact with your car. So I think that if that fell hard enough, that could easily break my glass. It's something that's kind of worries me a little bit. So I would probably just throw a towel or something down just to kind of prevent that from falling down and making contact. Another thing to be mindful of is your clearance issue. So you can see here, this is an industrial door. We just kind of wanted to prove a point, but if you have a personal garage door or you park in a parking garage for work, this is adding a lot of height to your car. So even compared to like a fork mounted style bike rack, those sit a little bit lower, not by a lot, but this is something that you need to be mindful of. You're adding quite a bit of height to your car. Now we're gonna take the bike off to just get a closer look at some of this. So we'll get the straps first. Those are just that nice rubber strap that are gonna hold that down in place. Pretty easy to use. Get those out of the way. And those, you know, over time, they'll get a little bit easier to kind of pull, but I don't think these are super stiff. There's some that are out there that you really have to pull hard on, not those. Now, I would hold on to your bike while you do this. So we'll unlock that, get that lifted up out of the way. But before we do that though, I'm gonna grab my towel and get that loosely held in place. Get that lifted up. Just let that, I'm gonna make that go all the way down because I don't want it making contact at all. So now I can get my bike off of here. And see, I'm ready to start riding. I don't have to get my wheel out. We'll get that set aside. And then what I like to do when I'm not using this is I will fold this all the way back up and you can bring this all the way in right here or you can tuck it in right here, whatever you'd like to do. And then this will just rest on my crossbars here, but this would eventually make contact with that. So then you can just pull that out, get our straps cleaned up and we're ready for, you know, non-use. So. If you're just hitting the trail, you can leave this all loose, but driving around throughout the week, you don't want this stuff loose. So I like to clean it up a little bit. You know, you can even kind of tie itself back on here too. So that's another thing with this. I like that it has the different mounting locations. So if we need to run these straps somewhere differently to have a better fit, we do have these hooks to create a better fit for our tires. Now taking a closer look at the cradle here, I've loosened it up to show that this will adjust to fit different wheelbases. And taking a closer look here, you can see how it fits different tire sizes as well. So right here is where that road bike was sitting. Then it gets a little bit larger for just a standard mountain bike. And then it expands out to fat tire bikes. Now, this measurement inside to inside is only four and a half inches. Malone says that this works with five inches of tires. We don't have a fat tire bike here in the shop that weighs under 33 pounds. Most of those are gonna be up over 40 pounds, but I think that it would sit in there. It would just kind of be bulging over the side a little bit. The strap will definitely be able to reach up around that. It's just not something I'm comfortable putting up there, especially with that lower weight capacity. Now taking a closer look at the arm here, we're able to ratchet this down um, this works with tire sizes of 20 inches up to 29 inches. And when it's unlocked, it just kind of free slides up and down. And then as we lock it, it won't go up anymore until we unlock it, but it will allow you to really get that tightened down to your bike tire. Now, when it comes to the finish of this, the main body here is gonna be aluminum and then everything else is gonna be plastic or all these other components are gonna have a powder coat finish to it or the rubber strap and rubber pad there, or the foam pad. I think that for the most part, this is gonna do a good job of holding up against rust and corrosion. I think over time though, this foam and these straps, they're eventually gonna see some signs of wear and tear, especially if they're exposed to harsh elements throughout all the seasons. But you're gonna have that with a lot of different bike racks. It's not this, just this one. This one's not any different. But for the most part, I think it's gonna do a good job of holding up. Now this does stick up off my roof rack quite a bit more compared to the fork mounted styles. Uh, we get this raised design here that really kind of gets this up off the ground. 
And you know, some people aren't into that. Some people want a streamlined look whenever their bikes aren't on there. So we'll give you a quick measurement to show you how much this adds to the top of my roof rack. And it's sitting at about nine and a half inches from the top of my roof rack there to the top of this cradle. And that is definitely the highest point whenever I have it down in the stored position. To get this installed, first thing we need to do is lay it up there. Now, you can put the hardware in without the underneath bracket in place, but I'm going to set it up there and get these brackets in place first. So we'll set it up there, get everything lined up, get the first one or the front one put in place, and then we can put the second one on. And then we can start dropping our bolts down through. Now the shorter bolts that come in your kit, those go on the back one. So we'll get those dropped in place go around our crossbar and there's different points right here depending on the style of crossbar you have so we have an arrow shaped bar here so I'm going to go on the outer mounting locations and these interior ones those are more for like a square bar now you're going to get four bolts that are a little bit longer and those are going to go in the front location so we'll drop these down in these holes get those put in place. Now, you can see where this one's already kind of angled out a little bit. I've tested this out on several different manufacturers crossbars. Um, I don't have a Malone set on mine here today, but it's going to do this with most manufacturers arrow shaped bars where they just kind of jet out a little bit. So that is going to be okay as long as you're fitting in those dimensions we spoke about earlier. We'll get all of those put in place. You want to make sure the head of that bolt is sitting down in this housing. Next thing we need to do is before I start putting hardware in place, I like to put a towel down just to kind of rest everything up there. Also put it underneath there just in case we drop something. We don't want to harm our glass or the finish on our roof. So we'll put this bracket underneath and then we'll follow it up with a washer. And then we'll put one of these nuts on, get that started. And it is a tight fit here, especially with that towel in place. But once we get it started, we can back that out to get a little bit more room to work. So we're going to put a washer and a nut on each bolt that sticks through. And then we're going to have another bracket that goes around this far side of the front too. So this isn't too challenging of an installation. It's probably something I wouldn't take off though that often. I think it, if you really need to take it off, if you want to, you know, go through a car wash or you just don't want it on anymore, you know, not going to ride your bike through the winter, you can definitely take this off pretty easily. But for the most part, I would just keep this on if you plan on using it much. So we'll get this back one put in place and I just like to get them loosely installed so I can make sure that I have everything lined up. And then we can just evenly tighten everything down so we get a nice snug fit on our car. Now that I have it tightened down all the way, you can see it's securely fit against my crossbars. I'm shaking the whole car so we can start prepping this to get our bike loaded up. So I'm going to get this strap out of the way, do the same with the front. and then we can get our arm unlocked and prepped. And this is where I need to get it out. I tucked it down there to make it a little bit easier to hide. This is where, you know, the downside of this is how far this goes forward again is that loading process. So I'm going to grab a towel because I don't want that resting against my glass while I get my bike loaded up. So to get our bike in place, you may have to make some adjustments on those wheel cradles. So I'll get this put up there and you can see I need to adjust my cradle. So what I need to do is bring this front one forward a little bit so that it rests in there properly. And then you can make your adjustments and tighten that down. If you're just gonna use the same bike all the time, you can get that tightened down, it's not a hassle, but if you're swapping out bikes all the time, they have different wheelbases, it might become a slight 
hassle. You can see we've got a good fit there, so we can get those tightened down. So then you can take the included tool and tighten down that little bolt on the inside of the cradle, and we can get our bike loaded up. Get that placed on there, keep a hand on it, and then we'll bring up our arm, put it right in front of our brakes, and bring down that hook. So then once you have it secure there, we'll take those keys and we'll lock it in place. That way it doesn't go back up. And then we can put our straps on. Now you can see we do have all that excess strap, so I just kind of like to tuck mine back down into the cradle. You can also bring it back around from underneath too. So whatever your preference is, I just don't want that flopping around in the wind, smacking against my car. So now that we have that in place, we've got a nice secure bike and we're ready to hit the road. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is gonna show us the side-to-side -side action. This simulates turning corners or evasively maneuvering. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Once we get to the full speed bumps, we'll see the up and down action. This will be just like driving in and out of a parking lot, parking garage, or driveway. But overall, I think this is a really good bike rack. It's not the fanciest one in the world, but we get a really decent wheel mount style design. So it's really easy to use. The biggest thing for me is the, the risk of this coming down and making contact with my vehicle. So, Adding just another step into getting a bike on top of your roof is, it's a hassle. There's no getting around it. So you run the risk of damaging your car every time you put something on your roof. And if you have to worry about this swinging down and making contact with your glass, your roof, that's something that you definitely need to be cautious with. But when it comes to holding the bike in place, I was pretty shocked at how well this does. Taking it out on the test course, it did a really good job. It didn't move around a whole lot, not any more than any of the other ones. And I like that I can just easily take this off. Now I have a car, so I don't have any issues with reaching on top of my roof, but being able to just completely get the bike up there and not have to take up space with a wheel and just take it off and get riding, I think that's the biggest benefit with these. But overall, this is gonna be a good rack and I think it's gonna be a really cost-effective way to get you a wheel-mounted style. But that's gonna do it for our look at the Malone Pilot Roof Bike Rack.